Welcome back to SRB Gaming. Today, as you watch the Pluto Exploration Vehicle take off from the Charon Base 1, we will be exploring Pluto's lar second largest moon and largest outer moon, Hydra. Hydra is not its most massive moon, however, it is the largest with a diameter of about 100 kilometers. It has a very low gravity. It's similar to landing on Phobos. We do not have grappling hooks, but these Kerbals are up for the challenge. One of them has been left back at the base. We dropped him off after the last mission. And uh, Wilfrey Kerman is leaving in the Pluto Exploration Vehicle lander with plenty of Delta V. He will be taking off from Charon and traveling to Hydra. His mission is to land on the surface, plant the flag, and return to the Charon base. And as I said in the last video, the Charon base is our uh, home base for all things Pluto, Kuiper Belt, and Scattered Disk from now on. And that basically means all missions are like to these areas are likely going to begin and end here. Resupply missions for fuel and more Kerbals and modules will be sent later, although I am getting rather significant performance issues landed at the base, hoping to solve those soon. Anyway, Pluto has five known moons. The largest moon is the innermost, and as you can see, it's Charon, or Charon, if you prefer to pronounce it like that. <laughs> I like Charon, but whatever. Anyway, whatever you want. Charon is the largest of Pluto's moons, and it's extremely large relative to Pluto. With a surface gravity of about 0.25 meters per second, it is large enough to cause the very center of Pluto's orbit to be outside Pluto, which means it causes a binary system to form. And interestingly enough, that's actually almost cause to classify them both as dwarf planets, but that's never actually been done. Anyway, our next innermost moon is Styx, which is significantly farther out than Charon. Styx is very small, with a 6 kilometer radius. It's uh, fairly dense compared to some of the other ones, but <clears throat> again, it's extremely small. Next we have, next we have Nix, which is the third largest moon, second largest of the four outer small moons. It is more dense than Hydra, but it is smaller. And I was actually unable to land on it due to a Kerbal Space Program glitch. But I promise that in real life, it is there, and you can land on it if you could somehow get a ship out here and maintain orbit. Anyway, next we have Kerberos. Kerberos is in between Nix and Stick. Uh, sticks in size. It is a uh, fairly... It is a uh, very lumpy, but not nearly as lumpy as sticks as it is significantly larger. And finally, the largest of the outermost moons and the second largest moon overall of Pluto is Hydra, and that is our target for today. Hydra has a uh, low density, at least. I don't know if they actually know the mass, but the numbers I am using from a uh, combination of Wikipedia and Space Engine are uh, showing that it's l less dense, and, but they do know that it is the largest of Pluto's outer moons, second only to Charon. Hydra is fairly round, at least in this simulation. We will be getting actual pictures of it when New Horizons flies by on July 5th. Looking f look forward to that. July 5th? July 13th. It's one of those. Look forward to that. So, our lander today has obviously lights, batteries, SAS. We have a central fuel tank with four outer ones. They do not detach. This thing is meant to be refueled and reused from the Charon base as a uh, ground ground base. Uh, I'm actually landing without the landing legs because for some reason turning on the landing legs drops my FPS anywhere from 5 to 10. And with a really terrible computer like I have, I can't afford to lose that. 5 to 10. With Hydra's ridiculous Okay, even on Charon, I can land without the landing legs and just use the SAS to easily hold the ship upright. Hydra's gravity is something like 0 .01 meters per second. It's so low that holding yourself up with the SAS is not a problem, and I, I, I even fell over, and it was easy to right the ship. Uh, I added these planets, if you're wondering, myself, by modifying the config and using Space Engine textures and height maps. Space Engine is awesome, you should look at it. Uh, I have added currently Ceres, Vesta, and the entire Pluto system. I, I will be adding more Kuiper and Scattered Disk objects soon, as I need them, because no point in having lag if you're not using them. And uh, I am having an issue where some objects based off Gilly, notably Nyx is the only one I've proven so far, 
Basically, when you land on them, your ship sinks beneath the surface and explodes, just like Dimos in the stock stock RSS. It's not really stock, but anyway, Dimos is a kraken. Nix is a kraken, but Hydra is not. So I'm wondering if it's a size thing, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna try and land on Styx later and see if that causes an issue because Styx is really small. Again, six kilometer radius. But uh, if you would like, oh, I have to give credits, first of all, Space Engine for Textures, RSS Creator for RSS. Uh, and I also was helped by the Planets Expansion by Brandonator and Pozine from the KSP forums really helped me get this working. So credits to all of you, I just typed a couple lines to get this working. I really like these new planets and moons. I am going to be have to be sending a... Uh, new fuel tank to carry on eventually. At the end of this video you'll see that my ship will have landed, the uh, Pluto Exploration Vessel, will have landed with enough Delta V to return to Hydra or any of the other Pluto moons two or three more times depending on how wasteful I am with my Delta V. This means that I am probably fine for now, but what I do want to do is send a new transfer vessel, because I actually crashed mine into the surface and didn't bring a docking port. Probably not a good idea. Send a new transfer vessel along with some fuel cargo, land the cargo at the base. We can bring some cast parts along with fuel to transfer into the uh, lander vessel. And then the lander vessel can use the uh, transfer stage to visit other Kuiper Belt objects, although I may have to bring a new smaller one because uh, it doesn't have a docking port, so unless I attach it with cast parts, I'm going to have to do that. So, there is a, this is a long mission, i got to say. But, again, uh, I believe I said this in the last video. I am taking suggestions for where you would like to go in the next video. I would prefer if it was in the Kuiper Belt or Scattered Disk. So, uh, some options. We have Orcus and Vanth. Orcus and Vanth, yes. Those are uh, in an orbit about opposite Pluto. <laughs> that is another uh, possible dwarf planet. There's Haumea, Makimaki, Eris. Those are all confirmed dwarf planets. And they all have moons. Oh, actually, not sure about Makimaki, but the other two have moons. So, uh, 2007 OR10 is a very large unnamed planetoid out there. So that's a good suggestion. There's lots of stuff. Seriously, if you haven't done this, look online, look up Trans-Neptunian Objects, and just look at all the options. There's tons of them, and they're so much... There's just so many of them. It's really interesting to read about. I recommend you do that. It's been really fun exploring KSP, but it's more fun to read about the real thing. The Kerbal on board this ship is a little confused. <laughs> because he keeps looking in the seat next to him and there's no one there. After sitting next to that guy for 30 years, traveling from Earth to Pluto, it's a bit strange on his little week-long journey to Hydra that no one's there. If you've seen in the video, traveling to parts other parts of the Pluto system are actually rather difficult because, just because Charon gets in the way. It's so big relative to Pluto that any orbits that intersect Charon are almost certainly going to get an encounter with it. And that causes problems, and the encounters are really weird because of how close it is to Pluto. They bend and curve, and they can slingshot you out of the system or into Pluto, and you got to be careful. And I actually had to change my orbits a couple times just arbitrarily just to get out of Charon, or time warp to stop Charon from interfering with all my plans. The other moons, thankfully, have relatively low gravity, so you're not likely to accidentally get an encounter with them, especially not like Styx, how small it is. Hydra, I, I believe I got an accidental encounter with it once entering the system, but it's rare. So, thank you for watching this manned mission to Hydra, Pluto's most outermost moon. Pluto's outermost moon. Post your suggestions for the next mission to the Kuiper Belt or Scattered Disk, based out of the Charon ground base. To the comments, subscribe for more videos. Definitely helps the channel. You should probably do that if you want to see more videos. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, tell your friends if they like KSP. Anyway, thanks for watching, and see you next time.